in Afghanistan today. Voters turned out for that country's second presidential election, an election that has enormous implications for U.S. policy in that country. We won't see any preliminary results before Saturday. The vote took place despite numerous suicide bombing and rocket attacks throughout the country. Jim Shudo is in Afghanistan's capital of Kabul. In big cities and small villages, millions of Afghan men and women defied threats of violence to choose their president. 18-year-old Ali was voting for the first time. What do you want the president to do? I want uh, my president to uh, uh, catch, catch the Taliban. The Taliban tried to disrupt the vote, killing at least 26 people around the country. And police in Kabul shot dead two suspected suicide bombers before they could strike. But it was not the paralyzing violence many had feared. 90% of polling stations stayed open. The 100,000 coalition forces on alert to respond to major attacks did not receive a single call. This is the kind of security you have in Kabul today. Afghan police and soldiers at every major intersection checking every car. And that's left the streets almost completely deserted. Polling stations were quieter too, especially in the south. A low turnout there where President Hamid Karzai enjoyed wide support could boost his closest challenger, Abdullah Abdullah. The Taliban pasted warnings everywhere, said a resident of Kandahar, saying anyone who votes will be punished. Where people did vote, there were other problems. One candidate, Ashraf Ghani, claimed warlords were forcing people to vote at gunpoint for President Karzai. And in a village outside Kabul, the tribal chief explained not all Afghans embrace American-style democracy. I have 700 families under my control, he told us. Whatever candidate I say, they vote accordingly. As the polls closed, the tension lifted. The question now is whether this election will produce the peace Afghans are hoping for. Jim Shudo, ABC News, Kabul.